We welcome you this morning and ask you to join in worship as we believe God joined us in the worship gathering. This service is a direct broadcast from the sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church, 534th Street Northwest in Fairway, Minnesota. Our pastor, the Reverend Michael Nerva, will be conducting the service and delivering the sermon entitled, Our Freedom in the Gospel. Our organist will be Nancy Simonson, with special music provided by the Trinity Choir and the Trinity Handbells. The radio broadcast on Sunday, November 2nd, is given in loving memory of Elsie A. Schultz by her husband, Elmer Schultz. There will be a special order of worship as we celebrate Reformation Day and All Saints Day on this Sunday. Please join us for our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 656 in the Lutheran Service Book.
we begin in the name of God the Father who created us in all things, God the Son who redeemed us, and God the Holy Spirit who brought us to faith and keeps us in our faith. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. According to Luther's small catechism, confession has two parts. First, Let us then confess to God our Father. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Keep us steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort all of your people in times of trial. Defend us against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Psalm 46, we read responsibly. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Come, behold the works of the Lord and how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes the forest trees at the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He preserves the spirit of the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of the hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our the second lesson is from 1 John 3, 1 through 3. And see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see him as he is. 
and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. And please rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message. Please. Well, good morning. So tell me, on October 31st, what did you guys do? Oh, you, you remember, yes, what? Trick or treating. Hello. Well, if you went trick or treating, what'd you go as? Outside. You went outside, yes, I'd go outside. <laughs> That's always the best when you go trick or treating outside. But what about costumes? Do you wear anything? Yes? What? G.I. Joe. You were a G.I. Joe? That's good. And how about anyone else? How about you? Yes? Skeleton. You were a skeleton. Ooh. Were you in a closet? <laughs> okay. Anyone else? No? Your name is Anna, and you went as Anna? Okay, I understand. Well, when you say trick or treat, what happens when they come to the... They come to the door. And then what? And then they give you lots of candy, so it's a long idea to hit the streets as many times as you can. By the way, you adults, if you have leftover candy, the church can use that, because we'll <laughs> give it to... So... We will pass it out to children, you know. I just thought I'd tell you that that's what we're doing today. But you know what else October 31st is? We celebrate in the church. Probably don't know it's not as popular. It's the day of the Reformation. When, <laughs> when Luther nails the 95 Theses in the church door. And so we also celebrate that, although it's probably not as... I'm sure when Luther nailed his 95 Theses, no one gave him a bucket of candy. But it was a, it's a thing for which we celebrate all the time because Jesus redeems us and he saves us. Now, the second big thing that's happening today is All Saints Day. Do you know of anyone who's really good? Yes, who? Who? Your parents? No? Okay. Remember, you have to live with them. Um, Anyone else? Anyone else you know who's really good? Who? You are. Okay. Yes. Your neighbors are good. Well, good. Since you said about your parents, you need good neighbors. Anything? Anyone else? No? Okay. Well, what makes a person really good then? What makes someone really, really good? 
What? If they're helpful, that's good. What else makes them good? No? That, yes? When they share, like they're candy. Yeah, that's right. And that's a good thing. Now, Jesus, of course, comes because to make us saints, because it's All Saints Day. A saint, then, is someone who actually believes in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's why we know who we are. We're kind of degenerating here, so I better give you candy. So we'll think about that. The Reformation and that Jesus saves us, okay? And we can tell others. Now let's fold our hands, bow our heads. I'm going to pray. Jesus, we thank you that you had Martin Luther years ago put the 95 Theses in the church door to tell us all that we can be saved by what Jesus has done and that all who believe in you are truly saints. Lord, help us then that we would go out and share that good news with others. In your name, Jesus, amen. And now I'm going to give you candy and you don't have to say anything. sing our next hymn. Please join us for our next hymn, Built on the Rock, number 645 in the Lutheran Service Book. You can go.
Dear friends in Christ, the lesson for our sermon today from 1 John 3, verse 1, the first part of the verse. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And I invite you all then to consider with me the freedom that we have in the gospel, the freedom which we have, which we celebrate this day, and of what it means to be a Christian. <clears throat> and so it is that we consider the fact we are children of God. We are reminded as we think of the Reformation, of the person of Martin Luther, and not just merely of him, but of the open Bible in his hand and what this meant. For Luther, he found no peace. The church of his time taught that you must do good works in order to merit heaven. And Luther was always bothered, how can I ever do enough good? Luther was a law student. And one day as he was traveling home, as he was walking, there was a storm. And it was a violent storm and lightning hit a tree. Luther fell to the ground and said, Saint Anne, preserve me and I will become a monk. Saint Anne, by the way, was considered to be the mother of the Virgin Mary. And Luther was true to his vow. He became an Augustinian monk. His father was very angry because his son was going to be a lawyer. A lawyer makes a lot of money. Being a monk, well, you don't support your parents in their old age. But Luther did this. And he tried to find peace. After all, it was assumed that if you were a monk, you were doing the ultimate good work. You were in a monastery. You prayed. You went to services. And Luther was a monk's monk, if you will. He would take a whip and he would beat himself until he was bloody and passed out, crucifying his sinful flesh to make it so it was more holy. Luther would fast. And by the way, I, I like all the pictures of Luther you've ever seen because Luther was a big man. And he would fast and fast and fast until he would pass out. He found no peace. He would go to confession. And if you could imagine all of you sitting in the front two pews and waiting for your turn to go into the confessional, Luther would be in the confessional sometimes for two hours. And he went to confession every day. Two hours. And finally, this came to a head, two hours a day. I mean, if, if you didn't get ahead of Luther, could you imagine sitting on a hard wooden bench for two hours? Finally, the, the head of the monastery asked him, what have you done? You live in a monastery that you have to confess your sins all the time. You don't get out. And you don't do anything but pray and come to services and work. And Luther said, every time I come to the confessional, I realize of some sin that I have forgotten, something that I should have done, and I have to confess it, or I won't be saved. Luther's behavior was just driving other people in the monastery, well, it was driving them nuts, to be honest with you. It's like a bad roommate. They had to do something. And so they decided the best thing for Luther to do was to, to get his doctorate degree in theology and to study the Bible. And Luther comes to the library and he finds the, finds the Bible chained there. It's written in Latin. Luther understands that if you want to really understand the Bible, it's not in the Latin version. You go back to the original languages, to the Greek of the New Testament and the Hebrew of the Old. And it's there that he discovers the truth. How are people saved? Not by their works. How are people made children of God? It's because of what Jesus Christ did for them. That there was a payment for sin. 
People cannot free themselves from sin. They are born dead, blind, enemies of God. If they are to be saved, it's because the Son of God saved them. That He endured all things and died on the cross for the sins of all the world. That He paid the perfect price. And now, all that anyone can do by the power of that Word and the Holy Spirit in their lives is to believe and be saved. And therefore, a man is saved by faith alone, apart from the works of the law. And when he realized this, he felt as if a great weight had been lifted from his shoulders, and that as he would write, that the very gates of heaven opened before him in all its glory. Simple faith saves anyone. And for those who are listening on the radio today, you who are tuned in, all you have to do is believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And there is the certainty of heaven. And by the way, not just merely for our radio listeners, but everyone who's gathered here today at Trinity, and for all who, who will find the gospel as Luther did. And you can be certain of eternal life. Certain of it. And if you ever doubt that you are saved, where are you looking? Is it at yourself? The evil that's inside, as Luther did when he fasted and whipped himself? Or is it in the cross of Jesus, which Luther would say, look to the cross and know that that was a perfect sacrifice, that there is certainty of salvation, not of what you do or who you are, but what Jesus has done for you, saved by faith alone. But the story doesn't end there, friends, as we celebrate the Reformation. We find that as Luther was in Wittenberg, on the other side of the river was a man named Tetzel. And John Tetzel was selling indulgences. An indulgence was a piece of paper which you could buy, and it would give you the forgiveness of your sins. You buy it, you're forgiven. This money, of course, was for a good cause. Leo X said it was for the building of one of the greatest cathedrals in all of Christendom. So come and buy your forgiveness. What's more, these indulgences were good not only for you and all your sins, but for those who were in purgatory. I mean, think of it. Maybe if you were in that day, you had doubts about whether or not your parents were in heaven or your grandparents. What could you do? You could buy indulgences that guaranteed that they were out and in heaven. Who wouldn't do that? Scrape up the money and pay, and heaven is there. It was that easy. Or so Tetzel said. And he came with a large caravan, which was entertainment. Remember, they didn't have TV. They come to your village, and there's a juggler. They come, and there's entertainment. There's a choir. And they sing that great song, as Tetzel would say in his own sermons, when the coin clinks in the chest, the soul rises up to a heavenly rest. And that, dear friends, is where we find that the Reformation is going to begin in a big way. Luther comes to his church, and there's a man dead drunk in front of it. And he says, what's wrong with you? Why are you drunk? Passed out in front of the church. He said, that's okay. And from his boot, he pulls out an indulgence. See, I'm forgiven for getting drunk by this piece of paper. And Luther read that, and he was angry, to say the least. And so he went home, and he wrote out 95 theses which he was going to put on the Wittenberg church door, a place where many things of interest of, were put, advertisements, things you wanted to sell. And he started hammering it on the door. It was October 31st, and the next day was going to be one of the greatest celebrations the church had. 
everyone was going to be coming to town for All Saints Day. And they would be there to read this or to hear about it. Of course, it did not stay on the Wittenberg church, church door long. It was taken down and by the use of movable type. These theses, these ideas that someone is saved by faith alone apart from the works of the law, of how they would be children of God by faith alone, went throughout the entire known world within six weeks. Six weeks it appeared in Jerusalem that before the day of email and electronic blogging. And there was a ruckus. For Luther said that all anyone had to do was to believe and be saved. And that there was no biblical support. None whatsoever for purgatory or for the idea that you could buy forgiveness of sins like a sack of potatoes. These pieces of paper were worthless. Even if the Pope swore his own soul for them. Because the one thing which would have the most important value was the Bible. As you might imagine, this does not sit well. And so finally, as you know, at the Diet of Worms, which was a city, the Holy Roman Emperor demanded Luther come before him. And with all these books in front of him, Luther was asked this. Will you take this back? Will you repent? And Luther said, Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Amen. And although Martin Luther had safe passage into the city, it was not clear whether or not he'd be able to get out of the city. And so his patron, the Duke, had him kidnapped and brought to Wartburg Castle. And there, Luther translated the New Testament into German. Prior to this, it was in Latin. How many of you can fluently read Latin? Same thing of Luther's day. Besides standardizing German grammar, this also made it so that anyone could read the Bible, an open Bible. In front of you in every pew is a Bible. Imagine if that were unreadable to you or not available to you. Luther said, read and find what's there and salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Now, I think we have good reason then to celebrate the Reformation and All Saints Day. After all, a saint really is someone who believes in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When the Apostle Paul writes to various churches, he says, to the saints of this city or to the saints of that city, it's those who are believers. And you're believers gathered here today. <laughs> there are really three reformers I want to talk about today. The first one is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the reformer who died for the sins of the world. And as has been said repeatedly in this sermon, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And it says in John 3.16 and other passages of note in the scripture. The second one, of course, is Luther. Luther, who if he had not said anything with his 95 theses or the open Bible, where would we be? But the third one, the reformer I'm going to talk about, and the third person is you. You may say, me? I'm not Luther. No one cares what I say. I didn't shake up the entire German world, the entire known world. I don't have that idea. And yet you are. You are the one who has been reformed, if you will. Given this word, that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, 
saved from sin, death, and the power of the devil, and saved for eternal life in him. Saved for a purpose. You are also the reformed to tell of who Jesus is and what he has done for you. <laughs> you know, there was a, another Martin at the time of the Reformation. He was Martin of Basil. He was also a monk. And he came to the same conclusion that Luther did. And he wrote on a little piece of parchment in his monastic cell. Jesus, I love you. I know you died for me. And I know I'm saved by faith alone. And then Martin of Basil took that piece of paper he put it behind a stone in his monastic cell. And then he covered that hole up with another stone. It was not discovered till hundreds of years later. I bet this may be the first time you've ever heard of Martin of Basil. But as for Luther, all the world knows. Because once he knew the truth, he had to share it. Dear friends, on this day of the Reformation, you who are heirs of the Reformation, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and tell the world of how they may be saved by faith alone. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds that one true faith. In Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. And please rise. We confess today our Christian faith using the words of the explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed. We confess then together. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In the Christian church he daily and richly forgives all my sins, and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. An offering for the Lord will now be received.
please join us in our next hymn for all the saints number 606 number 677 in Lutheran service book verses 1 through 4 Please rise. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all the children of men, we give you humble and hearty thanks for all the innumerable blessings which thou, to any merit or worthiness, you bestowed upon us. Chiefly do we thank you for your saving gospel, that we are saved by faith alone, apart from the works of the law. And as we celebrate the work of Martin Luther, we celebrate in actuality the word that went out and the word believed and the word of which we confess this day. Lord, help us to be steadfast then in that word, even unto the end, and so that we may receive the crown of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty and ever-living God, you make us both to will and do those things that are good and acceptable in your sight. Let your fatherly hand ever guide us and your Holy Spirit ever be with us to direct us in the knowledge and obedience of your word. That in all our doings, you would be with us in your most gracious favor and further us your continual help. That in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, that we may glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You are the one true healer. Show your mercy upon your servants and be with Kevin and Rachel Benson and Mandy Bloom and David Fuchs and Mary Hoyer and Lorena Klopenhauer and Harvey Phillips and Rich Sellentine and Kay Smith and the Reverend Robert Schneider Patty Stonehouse, and Shirley Tesh. O Lord, spare their lives and restore their strength. Even as you gave your Son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses, deal compassionately with your servants and bless them with your healing power. For we commit them to your gracious mercy and protection. Lord, in your mercy. 
and Lord Jesus Christ, before whom all in heaven and earth shall bow. Grant courage that your persecuted children may confess your saving name. In the face of any opposition from the world, world that's hostile to them, O oh Lord, be with your persecuted saints, and help these saints then to remember your faithful people who sacrificed much, and even faced death rather than dishonor when called upon to deny the faith. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen them to be faithful and to confess you boldly, knowing that you will confess your own before the Father in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Now, mighty and most merciful God and Father, we pray for those who are on our church rules who do not come, for the wayward and the erring, the delinquent. We implore you, O Lord, to turn the hearts then of all who have forsaken the faith once delivered to your church those who wandered from it by doubt or through the corruption of your truth. Mercifully visit them and restore them that gladness of heart that they may take pleasure in your word and be made wise to salvation through faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The mighty God, we thank you that your word goes out from you and does not return to you void. We pray for our missionary family this week, for Pam and Leonard as they serve in Asia. We thank you, O oh Lord, that Pam CT scans show that there is no new tumors and that all her cancer markers are good. We pray that you continue to sustain her. We thank you, O oh Lord, their children are doing well. We pray for Jasmine, the Asian field coordinator who is having gallbladder surgery in the near future, that you would be with her and be with the surgeon and grant her healing. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would raise up a field commander for the United States. We pray that you would continue to bless the video project, and all the video packages that are in operation. Be with all missionaries upon their dangerous ways. And bless your word, O Lord, that those who have not heard of your salvation may believe in you and be baptized in your name most holy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For Lord, these and all things we pray, for we are strangers and pilgrims on earth. We pray that you would help us by a true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you've given to us still day, before the night comes when no man may work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. For we pray this in all things upon our hearts and minds, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, world without end, who has truly taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Light is sown for the righteous, in joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Jesus Christ. And the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. As we come to the close of another service, we pray that it has been a blessing to you and a strength in your faith in Christ. This service is a direct, direct broadcast from the sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church in Fairwell, Minnesota. The radio broadcast on Sunday, November 2nd is given in loving memory of Elsie A. Schultz by her husband, Elmer. Our pastor, the Reverend Michael Nerva, conducted the service and delivered the sermon entitled, Our Freedom in the Gospel. If you'd like a copy of today's sermon, please write to us at the Trinity Radio Club, 530 Northwest 4th Street, Fairwood, Minnesota, 55021. Please be sure to include your name and return address and today's date. Also this morning, Nancy, was our, Nancy Simonson was our organist, with special music by the Trinity Choir and the Trinity Handbells. You can also visit us on the web at trinityradio.org where you can view copies of past services, order copies of past services, 
and view calendar events at Trinity Lutheran Church. Until next Sunday at 8 a.m., we return you now to the downtown studios of KDHL.